The Middle Belt Forum has challenged the federal government to yield to public demand and reveal the sponsors of Boko Haram. The national president of the forum, Dr. Pogu Bitrus, expressed the concern, especially uh, given by the report of the United Nations, that the federal government secretly engaged in Sulhu, also known as negotiations with Boko Haram terrorists, and allegedly offered them money, uh, monetary awards. Um, well, and the Zamfara state uh, government is still in the news. This time, armed bandits have overrun a military base in the state. Officials confirmed 12 fatalities comprising nine Nigerian Air Force officers, two police officers, and one Nigerian Army soldier. The attackers also seized weapons uh, from the killed service members and set ablaze other equipment in the facility. Well, to discuss this with us is Hassan Stan Lebo. He is a retired military officer. It's good to have you join us, sir. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Um, it's unfortunate that we always have to meet, uh, you know, and talk about these kinds of situations. The last time we were talking, we were talking about the NDA that was being overrun, and now a military facility. And <laughs> the story never seems to change in the space of. A few weeks, we're here again discussing the same situation. This time, can we really just say the military? Where is the government in all of this? Because I'm wondering to myself, we're trying to get the military to win this war. But on the side of our government, what is the body language? Because these terrorists are also watching the news. These terrorists are watching our governments. They're seeing uh, the body language of our government. And they continue to hit every single day, even though our military is doing everything in their power. We see that they're winning at some, you know, some level, but we see and hear more of these attacks every other day. Where does this leave us? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate being here again once, uh, once more. As a matter of fact, um, I know we've experienced this about once, twice, and so on. Uh, I would only want to advise the military to remain focused. I know of late we have been able to experience some gains by virtue of our operations, generally in the northeast and so on, and uh, that has been a big plus to the military. But I wouldn't want us to lose focus. Given our experience, we have known that these guys, I would say, have the capacity to be able to access our strongholds, our military bases, and even strike. So having suffered that once, twice, thrice, I expect that we should be able to uh, put in measures to ensure that um, we guard against such, as a matter of fact. Um, well, we have suffered casualties, both in terms of human casualties and, of course, equipment casualty. All we need to do is to learn lessons out of it, learn lessons out of it, and see how we can guard against further incursions like this. It could be embarrassing, it could be demoralizing to troops, it could be uh, 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 take us on the path of the low side, you know, by way of psychological balance and so on. But we must get out of it fast, and that's why we are soldiers, and hit the road, and keep doing what the nation expects of us. There's much work to be done. Mm -hmm. Of late, we are experiencing some reasonable impact. I just want to believe that we shall have all it takes to maintain the momentum and ensure that we are able to meet expectations of the Nigerian citizen. Now, now talking about the United Nations report on Sulhu and the fact that our government is in the know, uh, I think I remember saying that uh, to you that the DSS also has said that they have, they have the information as to who these people are, but they're waiting for a nut from the government, that's just the federal government, to go about the investigation or maybe to bring these people to justice. So, um, and now the Middle, Middle Belt Forum is asking that they name these people because many Nigerians are dying. We're losing num I mean, a number of people, women, children, I mean, the list is endless. Why is it so? Why is the government so tight-lipped about these people? If we know these people, why is it so difficult to name and shame them and bring them to justice? One of the reasons, or one of the um, 
one of the key things that this government rolled on to get into power was that they were going to fight terrorism to a standstill. And, and I think, I guess that's why they were voted massively in, in 2015. But here we are, there's information that even the international community has, that there are people who are sponsors of this particular insecurity that we're facing, and that even some of them are in, in our government, and that even our government is complicit in negotiating with these people. Why are we still encouraging it and we're not bringing these people to book? My sister, I am equally at a loss the way you are. In fact, as a person, I am embarrassed by the lines of action taken by government or in the handling, in the manner in which the government is handling a lot of situations emanating from this fight against terrorism and banditry. I am at a loss. If security constituted part of the uh, 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 do I say uh, 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 the tripod on which this government came into power? I expect to see far greater lines of actions that would, at every point, reassure the citizen that even if we are not making some impact, we have a government that cares. I really cannot understand what's happening. Frankly speaking, the UAA authorities have given us a list of 400 persons, okay, who, who are operators and are said to be sponsors behind Boko Haram. Till now, we are still hesitant at bringing them to book. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is it that some individuals in government know what we don't know? Or what is really happening? What is really happening? The Italian authorities wouldn't take this sort of mess. They would try them immediately like they've done in the past and immediately waste those guys. Here we are treating them with cheap drugs. We are talking about amnesty. We are talking about a, 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 a reinsertion into society. We are talking about possibility ability of bringing them into maybe the military or the security or the armed forces. <laughs> I laugh at some of our actions, frankly speaking. At times I ask myself if really we are serious about fighting terrorism and, 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 and banditry in this country. The whole thing is so funny. I really cannot understand. And I guess I speak the minds of well over 80% of Nigerian citizens, especially the ordinary Nigerians on the street. So, so I, I'm for just, Christ's sake, I'm just curious. government is just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. For Christ's sake, government is into a social contract with we the people to protect us. Section 14 to B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic embodies that for us. So what is happening to that? What level of commitment do we see on the part of the government? In meeting the letters of Section 14 to be find the welfare aspect of or the welfare component of that of that of that 14 to be cannot be met. That is welfare. That security is sacrosanct. There can be no excuse. So a situation where even government officials, be they cabinet members, be they governors or whatever, are telling us to protect ourselves, get arms. <laughs> Some of us wonder, are these the people that have gone into a social contract with us? Are these the people we are paying taxes to? To get what it takes to protect us? Telling me to go and look for whatever it takes to protect myself? When do I need to carry cutlass or AK-47? Which one? I should carry cutlass and face a man with AK-47? Or carry bow and arrow and face a man with AK-47? So where does this leave, so where does this leave the average Nigerian? Because... Um, I just had a conversation as to the outcome of the investigative panel on the NSAS um, situation. Um, that's an issue on one hand, and that's a resultant effect of 
a protest by Nigerians who were tired. Here we are again, a tiring situation where people, lives are being lost every day. These, the, it's be, gradually become numbers to us because every single day the papers keep churning out numbers of people who have been killed, people who have died, people who have been abducted. I asked a question today on my social media asking, why can't government try to spend the same monies and the energy and the time that the government is spending now to try to retrieve abductees from these terrorists? Why do we not spend that same money to make sure that these abductions don't even happen? Schools have resumed. Should students have to return to schools? That's another issue. You have to be able to ensure safety around schools. That's a whole kettle of fish on its own. And now if people decide that enough is enough, we want to go to the streets and protest, we will see the police come out in its full might. But yet, we're not safe within the territories, within the borders of our own country. So it makes me once again ask, what exactly is the purpose of government if the government cannot do what it was elected to do? Because at this point, it seems like the government is not necessarily giving us what they promised. You have just asked the same question. I just finished uh, uh, the commenting about. Uh, as a matter of fact, we, 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 we have the capacity to move from here to Zip Kenya, wherever, and pick up uh, the IPOP uh, 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 the, um, fellow or leader of the IPOP and so on. And yet we don't have the capacity to pick up bandits in our backyard. <laughs> it beats my imagination. Uh, it beats my imagination that even bandits, thank God we have taken some measures now against these bandits by the telecommunications thing, the, 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 the restrictions of movement on certain roads, uh, the closure of some markets, closure of certain schools that are you know far located and so on. But one thing still beats my imagination. Why is it that bandits find it very, very easy to access members of the community in the localities where they operate and be able to have informants among them, very reliable informants. And yet our own security agencies find it very difficult to recruit informants from same communities. Why? Who should have more access to the communities? We as friendly elements of friendly forces or they the bandits as unfriendly forces or elements. Who should have better access to them? So Are we actually pumping in enough money into intelligence to recruit people who, or to recruit informants? I hope we know that. <laughs> you don't just go and recruit informants by tapping people on their back and tell them to be patriotic and bring information. If that is the way we are still recruiting informants, I can assure you that <laughs> the informants would rather pass information to Boko Haram and make some money because they cannot go to farms now and everybody needs money to feed his family. I'm telling you the reality what will happen. Well, you must go out there and be ready to make sure they have the necessary incentives to be able to serve as informants. So, if that is not happening, then we shall continue to be at the level where we are. Because frankly speaking, the role intelligence should be played in the entire operation. I am not seeing it happening. Well, there is a huge gap. There is a huge deficit in terms of inflow of information that should get crystallized into intelligence. We ain't seen that. And so I'm beginning to ask some questions. What could be the problem? What could be happening? Because I know we are Nigerians. I know we are Nigerians. I'm a Nigerian too. I grew up here. I was born here. So when I talk, I talk like a Nigerian. Okay. Well, closing, because we're, we're out of time. Uh, elections are around the corner. We're going to see our politicians back in the streets becoming more accessible and maybe seemingly um, attentive to what we're saying. But are we going to see this insecurity issue go away? Because the question is, we want to have elections, but will we have elections in those places, knowing what is happening? And it's, these things are gradually... Uh, filtering down to the south, whether we like it or not. So in closing, uh, if you can quickly just answer this, uh, do we see this going away anytime soon? Well, it depends on the seriousness which our government attaches to the whole thing. 
Okay, uh, government has got to really be more serious. Government has got to be really be more serious. We must see beyond whatever we think or, or do away with whatever we think could be broadening our sense of vision, which does not allow us to interpret the situation on ground appropriately and apply the appropriate measures. Government must wake up from its trauma. All right? The government is not reassuring the ordinary citizen on the street that it stands for him. Every day we are asking the government questions which they are not answering. 400 sponsors whose names were given to us from UAE since in the first quarter of this year till now we have not tried them. We are treating, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, terrorists with key groups. We are busy talking about amnesty, this and that. We are not talking about the victims. Won't you attend to the victims first before you turn and give your amnesty, your so-called amnesty, to, to, to bandits? In the first place, how come the bandits got to your custody? They wanted a fight. Why didn't you give them a fight on the ground when you met them? You blow their fucking heads up. Okay. Now we, are, we have problems in our house because we have human beings who you cannot eliminate now because the world will tell you they have dropped their arms. We have to go. The first way you met them is when you could have done Dead them with serious blows. Okay. All this idea of amnesty is not part of me. We have to go. Uh, I hope we shall not have an Afghanistan situation in our house in another five years. When you begin to insert them into society, insert them into your houses and so on, before you know what, they grow in ranks and so on, until before you know what, in the next five well, years, we well, just we, like well, the Taliban we, we, we walk into we, Afghanistan. We really hope Afghanistan. that we do not get to that. We really hope, we sincerely hope, that Nigeria will not get to that position. Uh, hopefully our governments will be awake to their responsibility, but that's all the time we have. Uh, Hassan Stan Lebo is a retired military officer, and we really appreciate your thoughts on this segment. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when I come back, I will give you my take. Here's my take. Now, how do we want to progress as a country if everything is done to impede that progress? How do we say or express our displeasure to our government when we could get killed trying to do so? How do we get good governance if our so-called leaders refuse to be accountable or even listen to us? Instead, they institute or try to, uh, they think that we're trying to unsit them. For example, we have no Twitter anymore because they think that Jack is collaborating with NSAS protest, uh, protesters to unseat the Buhari administration. But when these politicians need our votes, they say all the right things. They wax lyrical. They show up to our streets. They even fry corn and akara and try to come down to our level. Or maybe that's what they think. They try to even be accessible to us. Then their phones come on. Then their constituency offices are open. And they seem closer to us. But we're no longer taking it. We're no longer buying that drama. We're no longer sitting here to hear stories. We want action. We want to see results. If we see no results, then we're going to keep pushing. No more will we be played by our politicians. Nigerians deserve better. And every Nigerian who's watching me today, you deserve better. And you need to start acting like it. I am Mary Anakol, thanking you for watching.